Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumansing. Topping our newscast tonight, the last day to turn in your 2013 tax return is here. As of last week, we have been offering helpful tips in filing a successful return. And for those of you who may not have gotten your information in on time, you can still do so. News 2's Shanika Robinson has the tales. The deadline to file for your 2013 income tax return is here. However, if you have not filed as yet, there is still time to do so. We would like for taxpayers to file by April 15th. You may get an extension if you can't prepare and file your returns by April 15th, but that does not give you an additional time to pay. All liabilities due and payable to the Virgin Islands Bureau are due on April 15th. For returns not filed by April 15th, you have up until 9 p.m. to file for an extension. The penalty for the extension is 5% per month for up to five months. The extension form 4868 is only an extension to file a return not to pay back. Therefore, if you owe the department, failure to pay penalties and interest will be still incurred. For taxpayers other than corporations, the overpayment rate is the federal short-term rate plus three percentage points. Generally, in the case of a corporation, the underpayment rate is the federal short-term rate plus three percentage points, and the overpayment rate is the federal short-term rate plus two percentage points. The following are some last-minute reminders while filing your 2013 return. It's really important that you sign and date your return. That's always tip number one. If we get a return that's not signed, we won't be able to process it. We want you to use your mailing address as opposed to your residential address. We want to make sure that your name appears, that it appears on your Social Security card, and also the number is the same as it appears on your Social Security card. Shaniqua Robinson, News 2. Now the Bureau of Internal Revenue extended their office hours. Therefore, you have until 9 p.m. for your return to be considered on time. Haitian nationals Desul Montpremier, 44, and La Morte Delva, 45, were both arrested Friday on St. Thomas after a federal grand jury returned a 10-count indictment. In December 2010, Montpremier, Delva, and Roro Edouer, 46, conspired with each other, according to documents, and additional co-conspirators to smuggle illegal aliens into St. John. On December 5, 2010, Edore was the captain of a vessel with approximately 33 passengers that traveled from St. Martin to the VI. Mon Premier Delva waited in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The U.S. Coast Guard spotted the vessel as Edore attempted to evade the Coast Guard. The vessel ran aground and sank, resulting in the death of at least eight individuals, including four children. Well, last week, we reported on the federal raid of Golden Grove Prison in search of smuggled contraband. On Thursday, details on some indictments involving smuggling prohibited items into the prisons, which were sealed since last year, were released. Plus, the BOC director's take on contraband smuggling. News News April Night has details. Federal indictments in 2013 involving contraband at Golden Grove Prison was finally unsealed Thursday, giving a peek into this prevailing problem in the territory's prison system. Anytime anything comes in to your facility, someone could bring it. Vendors, service providers, employees, and it includes people just throwing it over the fence. Three separate cases focused on former inmates who managed to smuggle prohibited items, including cell phones, homemade knives, and shanks in 2013. Drugs, alcohol, and cell phones. The other major contraband, of course, is weapons. Inmates fashion just about anything into a knife. The ongoing investigation at Golden Grove involves the St. Croix DEA's High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Task Force, the Virgin Islands Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We'll work with anyone who wants to work with us, and we welcome any help we can get. Corrections Director Julius Wilson said that the rate of smuggling contraband into the territory's prisons are not any higher than those of other prison systems in the country. However, 
That does not make it good. Anytime you have it, it's a problem. As for the results of a federal raid at Golden Grove on April 8th. We're waiting on the announcements by the federal government just like you are. The investigation into contraband smuggling is ongoing. Meanwhile, the U.S. Attorney's Office continues to warn against smuggling contraband into the prisons, saying it not only endangers the prison environment, but the entire VI community. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. At present, the United States Attorney's Office cannot comment further on the latest developments, but News 2 will keep you updated. Commissioner Alicia Barnes of the Department of Planning and Natural Resources reminds campers that permits are required to camp on the Columbus Landing site at Salt River Bay during the Easter holiday. Permits are being issued for until Tuesday, April 22nd. Guidelines and permits are available at the DPNR VI State Historic Preservation Office which is located at Fort Frederick Museum and at the Division of Environmental Enforcement at Anna's Hope. For more information, you can call the office at 719-7089 or the Division of Environmental Enforcement at 773-5774. Well, this week is Holy Week and traditionally, Crucians are gearing up to begin that camping tradition on St. Croix beaches for the long Easter weekend. But some campers have been out there for at least a week with plans to stay even longer. News News' Erica Parsons has that story. Salt River Bay is a home away from home for many, at least for two weeks. That's when many St. Croix residents pack their bags and head for the beach. It's fun for the children, it's fun for the family, and we come and we take the breeze, a meditation on the sea. For more than 30 years, families have been camping there. All those places was coconut tree all the way. These things was private place. I even the first person camping here. And for many reasons, family and friends, peace and tradition. We have it's egg hunt and the entire family come and that's like almost a hundred people coming in here every year we look forward for that. We cook and especially diving I love to dive my conch my fish, and I love to chew my line I like line fishing. I was suffering from spasm, muscle spasm so using the water to do my exercise. But camping St. Roy style isn't exactly roughing it, with fully stocked kitchens, functioning showers, carpeted bedrooms, and of course, bathrooms. While most enjoy the serenity, one camper says it's also important to reflect on the real meaning of Easter. Not so much the dukuna and the, and the, and the kongs. No, 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 no. It's about Christ. Because he died, that's why Easter is here. But if he didn't die, there would be no Easter. So when I think of all these things, so that's what Easter really means to me. My family and I will come here, we rest, we relax ourselves. And that's just what campers are looking for when they run away every year. We come here to take the beauty of the sea where we get it. Tourists come from away, pay a ton lot of money to come here to see Salt River. Why not enjoy it? So that's what I'm doing. I'm enjoying it with my family every year for 20 years. I haven't been camping. I've been away in the state. And I miss it, so I'm back on St. Croix, and I should stay here now. <laughs> Erica Parsons, News 2. And because of the increased traffic around St. Croix beaches, police are reminding motorists to drive carefully around the area and obey all traffic laws and posted signs. Well, Holy Week is celebrated throughout the world, and here in the Virgin Islands, no different. The week-long celebration begins with Palm Sunday and ends with Holy Saturday. On St. Thomas, here are a few events taking place. The Impacting Your World Christian Ministries will be hosting their 10th annual Good Friday service on April 18th that will feature seven local pastors. On Thursday, April 17th, the Saints Peter and Paul Cathedral will be having a Mass of the Lord's Supper followed by the Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament from 7 p.m. until midnight. And on Friday, April 18th, the Celebration of the Lord's Passion at 12 p.m. for children and 3 p.m. for adults over on St. Croix. The Methodist Church will be hosting a gathering on Wednesday, April 16th at the Sunny Isle Theater from 6 to 8 p.m. Then the Holy Thursday Love Feast on April 17th at the Ebenezer Church at 7 p.m. and the Good Friday service at Bethel Methodist Church at 8 p.m. Then at Ebenezer at 9 a.m. Be sure to stop by in celebration of Holy Week. Well, Boston is paying tribute to the victims and survivors of the marathon bombings. Vice President Joe Biden took part in a special ceremony on this one-year anniversary to remember the three people who died and the more than 260 others who were injured. Alexis Christophers reports from Boston. 
The city of Boston stopped to observe a moment of silence at the exact time one bomb, then a second, went off at the marathon finish line last year. Church bells rang to honor victims and their loved ones. Jane Richard and her older brother Henry remembered their brother Martin during a wreath-laying ceremony. The eight-year-old was the youngest victim killed in the attack. Survivors and first responders came together at a special tribute not far from the finish line. We will stand with you, remember with you, we'll never forget that this day means to you. Vice President Biden said America will send the world and terrorists a message when the 118th Boston yeah, Marathon steps off. Protection. We are Boston, we are America, we respond, we endure, we overcome, and we own the finish line. Despite 50 mile per hour winds and rain, Boston turned out on Boylston Street to honor the victims of the bombings. And spectators say they'll be out here in full force come Monday. Runner Joanna Hantel suffered broken bones and a traumatic brain injury when the bombs went off as she neared the finish line last year. I have to be here on the first anniversary of this to show that, you know, we are not going to be defeated. An attitude the people of Boston plan to take to this year's finish line. Alexis Christophorus, CBS News, Boston. And keeping our eye on the economy, fewer people around the globe are drinking pop. The world's biggest beverage maker says its soda sales fell for the first time in 15 years. Execs at Coca-Cola blame the decline on diet sodas, sodas and concerns about artificial sweeteners. But the company is not taking in a boost in non-carbonated beverages. Here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P all up. The Dow 89, Nasdaq 11, S&P 12. Well, did you see it? Parts of the world, most regions in the continental U.S. and right here in the Virgin Islands, many residents got a glimpse of the rare celestial event. The moon's color turned into a deep reddish orange, like there on the screen. The lunar eclipse unfolded over three hours, beginning, beginning at 2 p.m., 2 a.m. rather. A lunar eclipse happens when the Earth, the moon, and the sun are in perfect alignment, something that usually happens every couple of years. Kenneth Herman Jr., who is the Director of Division of Personnel, is advising all post-65 retirees who are members of the government's health insurance plan managed by United Healthcare, that the new April 1, 2014 rates will be deducted from their April 30, 2014 annuity checks. Additionally, these, those post-65 retirees who decided to upgrade to the UHC Plan F product will also see that amount included into their health deduction line on the April 30, 2014 annuity check. Therefore, the division will work with the GERS to establish a reasonable incremental deduction to collect the Plan F premiums owed to the government since October 1, 2014. You can call the division for more information. Well, it's time for our Carnival Corner as we go deeper into the heart of Carnival season. Here are some more tips on the daytime parking situation during Carnival. The timed parking areas will not be enforced during the time that the Fort Christian parking lot is closed. Parking is allowed along the southern side of Norregatta from the former Wet Willies to the professional building. Parking is allowed on the waterfront apron. When leaving the apron, all vehicles shall make a left turn only. Parking is allowed in the usual parking areas. There will be no parking, standing or stopping in disabled persons' parking spaces. No blocking of sidewalk access ramps, fire hydrants, crosswalks, other vehicles, driveways, entrances of homes and businesses and public roads. No parking less than 15 feet from a corner. No parking in specifically designated spaces. Well, again, remember the Fort Christian parking lot will be closed from Wednesday, April 16th in preparation for the VI Carnival Village. Percy Taylor of Percy's Bus Stop, along with David Didi Sharp Dawson of Didi's Bar and Nikki D's are your 2014 Carnival Village honorees. Back in the day, they both opened a restaurant named the Royal Palm in Smith Bay. The Royal Palm would later become the location that gave birth to two major carnival events, Juve and Brasserama. Now, brothers Charles and Joseph Leonard are the 2014 Cultural Food Fair honorees. They have participated in the Virgin Islands Carnival Cultural Food Fair for over 
33 years. Every year, they display their fresh fruits, vegetables, honey, eggs, herbs, tea bush, fruit trees, and more. From Leonard's farm, Lubin Roberts is the Adults Parade Marshal. He is an active Virgin Islander involved in all aspects of life in the community and has been involved in carnival for many, many years. Alfred Chubby Lockhart Jr. is the Children's Parade Marshal. He is the son of the late Alfred Lockhart Sr., a musician and educator. He has taught many of our top musicians. He's been a member of the VI Carnival Committee Calypso Tent and local Calypso competition. Backup band for over 30 years. You'll see him on stage during the shows and a ranger for many segments of our shows. Congratulations to all the honorees and thanks to the Carnival Committee for those photos. We'll be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.